what they do, what it is. This is Orion, aka Brass Balls, another deep dive tape stash. Before we take this plunge, please make sure you subscribe to Orion Hip Hop. That is the YouTube channel where you can peep previous deep dive tape stash episodes, as well as my music and other obscure hip hop things that I bring to the table for y'all to fester on. So please subscribe, repost, share, all that. I really do appreciate it. Now, let's take a deep dive into Antarctic waters, if you will, because it's going to get cold. Matter of fact, this is the coldest rapper that was coming out of the West Coast in 1990. He is Ice Cube, more like a iceberg. This guy was the man at that time for sure there was no other mc coming out of the west coast that was as ill as ice cube yes ice t was around he was doing his thing king t was around but ice cube was the man he was the lyrical dude out of nwa and this tape i got in front of you was off of his first solo album he was in undoubtedly the dopest rap crew and had the balls the gall to go off on his own to get out of ruthless records and try this thing on his own this album really set off an incredible solo run that a lot of times gets overlooked because of how early in the 90s ice cubes run came you gotta remember he dropped america's most wanted soon after that a dope ep that made if not just a little bit more noise than America's Most Wanted, in my opinion, and that's Kill At Will. Followed that up with Death Certificate, then Predator, then Lethal Injection, and all of those albums had their hits, had their singles. So that's a crazy run for a solo artist. Not to mention he put on his group, The Lynch Mob, and we are gonna get into The Lynch Mob a little bit later in this episode, but Ice Cube tends to get overlooked in the conversation of GOAT MCs and greatest of all times because he overshadowed his own rap career with everything he would later on do in movies and entertainment even to this day like with the big three and everything so you know but we're not talking about all of that we're talking about this particular tape that I got in front of you right now and this album America's Most Wanted was critically acclaimed got five mics and all that and this single is the title track of the album America's Most Wanted this is, was an album that he actually collabed with the Bomb Squad and I think that really helped Ice Cube get even more fandom if you will in the East Coast in New York and everything uh, Bomb Squad was known of course for their production with Public Enemy, Keith Shockley, Hank Shockley, they both had a hand on this production. And this track right here, America's Most Wanted, it's accredited to their production. Now, there was another producer that was a part of that album that often gets overlooked, and that's Sir Jinx, the great Sir Jinx. He actually produced the B-side on this single, and that B-side is Once Upon a Time in the Projects. Now, there is co-production credit given to the Bomb Squad, but once Upon a Time and Projects has very much a West Coast feel to it. I think Sir Jinx was a positive balance for this Ice Cube album because of the fact that he was coming from the West and was able to give that balance. I think if Sir Jinx wasn't in the pictures, who knows how this album would have sounded. You know, let me get into the lyrics real quick because America's Most Wanted has four verses. These days, rappers only even do two verses. Yeah, they might be long verses, but back in the days, they was really putting in that work. There's a lot of quotables on this. Back to the criminal set. When I hear it, I can't help but think of this exhibit song where it samples back to the criminal set. I think it's a Battle Cat production on that. But anyways, uh, he has, I'm a motherfucking klepto. Every mother, yo, even the way he ends the song, with the, the great thing about this track is how ice cube ends the song really ties it all back in you know he, he ties it off with every motherfucker with color is wanted this guy is really a songwriter at heart he might not be the mc with the craziest punchlines, but that's not what you get from an ice cube song what you're getting from an ice cube song is total composition 
storytelling and not so much punchlines like you would from a rapper like, for instance, Big L or Eminem. This is more of a MC that's into the storytelling and painting a picture of what he's saying. And he does that with America's Most Wanted and also does that on Once Upon a Time in the Projects. Now, Once Upon a Time in the Projects is a much shorter song. It's only one verse. It just carries on through. That one is so dope as well. I mean, the way he mentioned early teen pregnancy in it, you know, a lot of people weren't doing it at the time. Uh, I remember listening to this back in the days when he said uh, the line about good times. It's just the imagery is really dope on this track. Uh, one thing about this tape, I can't remember where I got it. I've had this tape for so long that it really escapes me where I had it. And in fact, I had the album before I had this tape. I actually have a solid collection of Ice Cube albums on cassette tapes. I mean, look at this collection, folks. The only one I'm missing is Lethal Injection. Throughout the years, just, just being a fan of this dude, when, when I started doing this episode, uh, I realized like damn man I, I'm, I'm missing the liner notes to the album and I have no idea what happened to those liner notes you know it's very long ago that I must have misplaced this somehow but you know how I do I said fuck that let me let me put some engineering work into this let me uh print out my own cut it up chop it up you know and because this is not this is just a J card um, I ain't gotta do no gluing on this one. Just gotta do some precise cutting, precise measurements, and it's actually a five panel J card. So I had to find the template online, apply it, and make sure I had everything on point. The single itself has instrumentals, so that's dope. Kudos to them for that. Um, that's fire that it had that. Cube's media legacy, like I mentioned earlier, really kind of overshadowed his rap career but he, this is not an mc for y'all to sleep on if you're young and you're not up on ice cube go check out ice cube man it's definitely worth a listen to this man's catalog and america's most wanted is definitely should be your first step you know it's 1990 when this came out and the sound of 1990 was just the difference in what happened in 93 to 90 is is crazy. Like, I listened to 90s music and going to 1990 and then fast forwarding to 1993, there's a leap in production. But nonetheless, this is still, still very much fresh, very much dope. I want to mention that Ice Cube had a, a really dope interview that he gave that you can peep online on YouTube. There's a three-part interview where he broke down a lot of uh details about the making of this album i'm gonna include that in the description box for the youtube another reason for you to peep these episodes on youtube is that i'll often put links to other videos interviews that some of these artists do where they reference some of these tracks that i talk about so i'm gonna definitely put that in the description box this song itself this america's most wanted song was the introduction to the lynch mob at the very end it mentions the members of the lynch mob and then later on you would get an album from the lynch mob gorillas in the mist that was uh, really fresh critically acclaimed and all that sir jinx who i mentioned earlier later on would go on to produce for cool g rap and i thought that was pretty dope because of the fact that america's most wanted the song itself very much reminds me of a cool g rap song that was out at the time called streets of new york now it's not so much that the production sounds the same it's what they're rapping about it's how they're painting the picture are very similar to each other to some degree at least for my ears and it's no it's to me it kind of connects the dots as to what would later happen with cool g rap and that his third album which is the one that followed uh wanted that are alive which is the one that had Streets of New York that came out in 1990, the same year that America's Most Wanted came out. He would later on come out with Live and Let Die, and it was completely produced by Sir Jinx. And that album, Live and Let Die, has a song called Two to the Head that's dope as hell, featuring Scarface and Ice Cube. And I just thought that that was dope, that that connection was made. I would imagine that Cool G Rap around the time that this album came out really took notice to it took a liking to it and was down to collab with ice cube 
and Ice Cube's uh, producer, little lesser known producer on that project, Sir Jinx. Ice Cube, when he got with uh, Bomb Squad for this project, uh, he has a story about um, running into Chuck D at the Def Jam offices or something like that, or maybe another record label's offices, because he was supposed to meet with the producer from Third Base, but uh, ended up uh, running into Chuck D, who then brought him into the Bomb Squad, and like I said, description box has a dope interview, has a, a links to a dope interviews for Ice Cube, where he breaks that down and breaks down how Burn Hollywood Burn, Public Enemy featuring Big Daddy Kane and Ice Cube was actually the first uh, mingling that he had with the brothers on an actual track, and then later fed on into this album. Uh, Shockley actually has an interview as well that I'm gonna put in the description that kind of has a different perspective on how everything uh, started but you gotta understand this is you know this is the 90s there was no social media there was no cell phones there was only one way to uh, meet each other and things basically uh, went a lot slower so it is what it is yeah man this was a, a dope dive like I got mad respect for Ice Cube and it's one of the reasons I had to, you know, get my tape right, man, because I wanted to, I, I couldn't stand looking at it the way it was. And uh, I think I did a, a pretty decent job with the uh, liner note tapes. Y'all let me know what you think. Drop a comment, like, share, you know, tell me if what I did was whack. I don't know. Just, just peep the episodes, you know what I mean? Be a hater. Be an appreciator. Be you. And with that said, I'm out. It was fun exploring the coldest rapper out of the West Coast. Peace.